G'day, it's Adam VK for GHZ. In this video, we're going to take a look at my Nexion for the K3NG Rotator Controller Project. There's a new release of firmware for the 5-inch version. That's today, the 11th of February, 2021. A few little fixes, new features. Stick around and I'll walk you through that. That's coming up. Alright, I just want to acknowledge someone who's been helping me with this project uh, ever since day one, and that's Jason VK1JA. Now, if you're wondering where the splash image comes from on the Nexion display, it's actually Jason's uh, antenna system. So, thanks, Jason, for, for letting me use that. Now, it was actually Jason who uh, put me onto the K3NG rotator controller to begin with, which then led me to uh, develop the Nexion for that. So, um, you, can, you guys can all thank uh, Jason as well. I've got the 5 inch on the uh, the bench here, it's out of the enclosure. That's a whole nother story, another video, what a disaster that has been. Moving right along. So this is Nexion version 2021-02-1101, that's today's date. And I'm still a version or two behind with the Arduino um, code, so I need to catch up on that as well. Alright, this Nexion firmware update applies to the 5 inch model only. First of all, a bug fix, and when you're on the satellite tracking page, Irrespective of the uh, whether the diagnostics were set to being visible or not, the DIN2 percentage was, uh, was appearing on the screen, so that's been fixed. So if you don't have the diagnostics enabled, you won't see that as it should be. Secondly, just to keep the behaviour consistent, when you did a long touch of the navigation buttons, i to hold this. When you did a long touch of the navigation buttons on the main numerals page, it would just automatically take you to the font and colour setting page for that. Um, I noticed the presets and the azimuth and elevation behaved a little bit different. You touched it, nothing happened until you did a release of, uh, of, of that area. So now what happens, it just goes straight to your font, your font uh, and colour setting page as soon as you touch it, like so. So it's, it's a little bit more consistent. Same with the azimuth, just touch it, it goes there. Elevation, touch and it goes there. And if you're operating in azimuth only mode, uh, a touch of the word azimuth and it will take you to the um, the, the font colour page. Another little minor correction I've, um, or a little addition I've added to the um, UDF help page. Just this little sentence here, which at the risk of pointing out the obvious. UDF functionality requires MCU side code customization. So these in itself um, will only send uh, a backslash command to the microcontroller. What you do with that backslash command depends what you've uh, got on the microcontroller side. All right, now to today's update. Um, and this suggestion comes from uh, Jason VK1JA. Uh, what I've done, I've added, uh, you can actually touch around the um, the azimuth gauge or the elevation gauge if you want to quickly send your rotors to a specific bearing. Now these operate on the 30 degree inc increments so if I was to touch say 90 let's touch it, uh, it will head to 90. Now it's a little bit too awkward to try and touch every degree point around the, uh, the, the compass so it's just limited to, to blocks of 30 degrees so if I touch 30 it'll go off to 30 just like that elevation behaves much the same way if I touch 30 here it will want to send it to that value now just remembering the elevation gauge can be flipped around so if we do that now on the configuration reverse elevation we go back the behaviour of these obviously changes to, to match the gauge. So over here, this will now be 150 degrees up. So they operate in every 30 degree, every 30, every major 30 degree points. Now I'm just going to show you the um, Nexion HMI in the editor. And the reason why they're every 30 degrees is because these hotspots are so big. If you can see the outline there, so you can touch anywhere within that outline. And that will say, hey, I want to go to zero degrees. And these hotspots can't overlap. 
Now it's getting a little bit tight for space in there, so it's a little bit awkward to, uh, to try and do it for uh, every single degree. Not only that, if you touch the middle of the gauge, it will still take you to the keypad entry. So if you want a precise entry, just touch the middle and we can enter it in, say 123, enter. Likewise with elevation, so we want to go to 32 degrees, enter that. There you go, you can stop that. So taking a closer look at the, the HMI, uh, I've labelled these hotspots HSA as in azimuth, zero, HSA 30 as in 30 degrees and so on around, around the compass. Over here, because we can flip the elevation around, I've called it HS as in hotspot, E for elevation and A, now I've just got B, C, D, E, F and G, like so. Alright, a few little minor tweaks and additions there. Now one thing uh, Jason has also reported is when you're using the 5 inch connection and you're powering it off the G5500 controller, the, that 13 volt supply line will sag really badly to the point where a 5 volt regulator can no longer properly supply a controller board in the connection. Um, and that will happen when you try to activate the motors, so like the supply just caves in. It's not a problem if you're running the 3.5 inch, um, but the bigger 5 inch with the bigger backlighting and higher current requirements will cause that to collapse. Now the easy way around that is to bypass the 20 ohm 5 watt internal resistor. This is resistor 1010 and there's three different ways you can um, do this from the, solar, from the component side. You can uh, put a wire link from the exposed end of the resistor to the input side of the 7806 voltage regulator. Just be careful with the soldering iron getting in there and you, you don't cause any solder shorts or melt any wires. Alternatively, if you unscrew the four screws that hold it to the meters and you can access the solder side of the board, you can remove the orange wire to the other side of resistor 1010 or you can remove resistor or keep the, the orange wire there, remove the resistor and put in a wire link. Now as you can imagine, as, uh, as, you, as your current draw increases from the, um, from the pin on the external connector, the voltage drop across that resistor is going to increase and the more current you, you, you draw, the bigger the voltage drop and it just gets to the point where it can no longer uh, supply a, a decent voltage. I mean, and it's unregulated to begin with. So just bypassing R1010 is the quick and easy fix if you're uh, running a high current device like a 5 inch connection off your G5500 external control port. My Nexion firmware for the K3NG Rotator Controller project is freely available. Simply go to my website, vk4ghz.com. Up the top you'll see a link for downloads. Click on that. Go to the obvious, the K3NG Rotator Controller project page. Scroll all the way down and you'll come across the zip packages for both the 5 inch and 3.5 inch connections. Alright, that's it for now. If you like these types of videos, please give me a thumbs up and like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell for the notifications. And until the next video, we'll see you then. Take care.